And did our vote about how we do this the last time cover every all the meetings or do we have to do that vote each meeting? No, that covers all the meetings, but you do still need to do a roll call vote for every action. Okay. But the okay. electronic signature piece that you voted on last time is that, yeah, uh, that's you don't have to do that again. Yeah. Okay. So um I'll go ahead and formally open the meeting and the public hearing um, of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, notice of this meeting was published on May 28th and June 4th, 2020. Um, we will, um, I'll just briefly, I know the applicant is, is, is listening. Um, and Carolyn, are you seeing anyone else waiting or? Uh, no, no. Nope. Okay, so I'll just briefly explain the steps in the process here. Um, uh, we'll start just with an invitation for public comment if there is anyone who wants to address the board about any matter that other than the application pending tonight. Um, then I'll invite the applicant to present the application, including sharing any screen to describe plans. After that brief presentation by the applicant, we'll take questions from the board. Then we'll invite members of the public, if any, to comment by raising their hand at the bottom of the screen and we'll recognize them or via phone by pressing uh, star nine. Uh, residents can listen to the hearing without a laptop by calling the call-in number and entering the meeting ID. Um, once public comment is over, the board will vote to close the hearing and turn off the chat box or raise hand functions. Um, and uh, so first we'll just confirm we have no members of the public at all, Carolyn, correct? Or, right. Uh, yep. So, so we'll, so we'll move forward and uh, uh, make a note that no members of the public were here for any public comment. Um, so we'll go ahead and proceed to hear the application for the special permit submitted by Andrew Serrato, Serrato Signs for additional ground signs for Starbucks drive through at 303 King Street, Northampton map ID 24B-70. Again, notice was published of this hearing May 28th and June 4th. And uh, we will, if, if the applicant can unmute uh, and give us a brief description, we have the, all the materials from your application. So a brief description of the nature of your request uh, for this special permit. Uh, do we have the applicant? Uh, I, I mean, I'm here, can you hear me? Okay, yes, yes. everyone, can okay. everyone hear? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. I can Go also ahead. screen share, sorry, if anybody needs, because the applicant called in. So um, I'd be happy to do that if you need to do that. And my okay. apologies, I, I wasn't sure which direction to go online on this. I should have asked it earlier. Um, basically, what we're looking for, if you start off on the east elevation, which is on a page three, the zoning rear, they called for special permit. We have the sign Starbucks with a drive-through uh, sign that gives an arrow showing to go around the building. Uh, we'll look, we're looking for um, a relief there on a special permit a little bit larger than what's allowed by 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 um by right. Um, then the majority of the signs, from what I'm understanding, it's all the drive-through and drive-through signs where you have the uh, pre-menu board, the menu board, and the order screen. And um, I, I need a special permit for those signs. When they design the building, they have the drive-through section facing the main road. And I guess you need a special permit for any signs that face the main road so they they did consider these signs even though there's no advertising on them but the, the pre-menu board the menu board and order screen that you need to go up to before you go up to uh, receive your product okay have people had a chance to uh, i assume people on the board have had an opportunity to review the materials since we're Mm -hmm. Just sort of getting a some screenshots, but without any uh, explanation of what we're seeing on the screenshots. But they came from the from the signed plans that were submitted with the application. Are there any questions from the board? Uh, 
Sorry, go ahead, Maureen. Um, I, I just want to have, just for clarity, and I don't know if this is um, who this question is to, it might be to Carolyn, um, but it, it refers to ground signs, but there is also uh, one additional sign that looks like it's not approved, that's not a ground sign, it's kind of the full channel um, signage, your standard signage on the you know, wall mounted on the back parking lot side. Is that also something we're supposed to be approving? So um, let me just, I'm gonna pull that one up on the screen. Thank um, you. So. If, if I may, if I speak out of turn, I apologize. I believe that, that what we're looking for on that, it's over the 25 square feet limit. So the signs allowed is just that it's over what's allowed square footage wise. Um, right, so let me, I'm just trying to get to the screen here, that's the front, um, so we need to get to the east side, here we go. So you're allowed one rear wall sign um, ten, um, that faces the parking lot, but it is um, typically 20, uh, by right sign is 25 square feet, so this is slightly bigger, so yes, you should wrap that into your decision. And I had a question. Um, was that it, Maureen? Or is, are you were you done? Or that was you my have? question. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the application, I think I saw that it was there was a intention for it to be illuminated. Is that right? Yes, it is illuminated. And um, how is it being illuminated? And what are the hours? The sign is being illuminated internally. Um, usually they have the sign go on during dusk, during operating hours. Which are what? That I, that I wouldn't be able to answer because I'm not sure what their hours will be, especially with everything going on now as well. I think most of the Starbucks in most locations close at 9 o'clock. I don't know if there was any restrictions when they went in front of the planning board on this location, so I, I couldn't honestly answer what those hours would be. Yeah, there's no restriction on hours of operation for any business really in Northampton. Um, the uh, so, and it's it is I think it's hard to know what the whether or not this is going to be a 24/7 operation. Um, but you could still, nonetheless, if they're not operating, you could certainly have a condition that says that it that the signs lights go off at the close of business and so if they don't close then it it doesn't harm um anyone and this is uh, the only business in that building right this is just a standalone just no Starbucks. no there'll be two other tenants oh that's right i'm sorry so uh, tag on to that elizabeth um caroline the the this is out of my knowledge base, but I want to just check on the, the lumens on the illumination of that sign in relation to, you know, our, our, the city's standards and goals there. Sure. So um, I haven't seen the lighting specs. I don't think they're in here, but maybe the applicant can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Um, that they but are, actually. I so the zoning board actually doesn't have the jurisdiction to exceed the allowed uh, lumen levels in the zoning. The planning board can approve that. So it, um, that's typically something that gets reviewed during the building permit application um, or the electrical permit, I should say. So if the applicant wanted to do to have um, brighter lights, and it's a little bit different for signage because it's um, um, it's not as easy to measure the um, impact of the illumination levels on the site from a sign, especially if it's internally illuminated. Um, but if it exceeds the what's um, in the standards, right, then they would have to go to the planning board. Okay. So we don't know that. 
I believe in the, I, th I thought I saw it someplace in, you would have yeah. gone past it now. I think it was in just that um, east wall. Okay. So you're yeah. at this point, you're just talking about the wall sign, not the just the wall sign, right? Okay. That's the only one that's, first of all, it's, you know, it's oversized, which is the only reason we're looking at that, right? Right. And um, it's illuminated. Yeah. I'm just yeah. referring to that one sign. Right. So okay. the next page may have well, those books. The application has a face area of 22.9 square feet. Is that wrong? That's just for the word Starbucks. So by adding the drive through sign, it brings it up to about 28 square feet. So we're basically talking three square feet over what's allowed by right. Yeah. And I would say you could, um, you know, you could even, I mean, the drive through is a directional component as well. So um it's a very small ask like the applicant said you know over the 25 square feet the other thing just so you know um maureen you probably noticed actually from looking at the plan so i'm sorry if i'm repeating something um this does face internally to the site and there will be another building facing it towards king street so it's sort of almost like a parking courtyard between two buildings and then beyond that is the railroad tracks and then the industrial park. And there's no residential use to the east. And, and even if there were the new building, assuming it gets built, uh, would, would be in between. Right. But, but there isn't, right? Um, Only what might back up in, from some distance to Bradford, right? No, this is well north of that. Further that, okay. So All this right. is really backs up to um, uh, the plumbing supply building. Oh, I see. So it's I on see. that end of the industrial park. I knew it was further down. I just didn't, I thought it was still, okay, yeah. that's helpful. But I'm a little bit confused because I thought the issue was the number of signs, not the size of the sign. So is that? It's mostly that. about those, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Right, it, for that particular sign, it's the size, right? That yeah, the way, one. If, if, if I may, what Lewis has, the building commissioner wrote, he said the wall sign in the back wall is over the 25 square foot limit. And the other three signs are ground signs. And so that's what the issue was, that the, the back sign was over the 25 square foot limit, which is three square, about three square feet more over than what's allowed. And then the three ground signs are the, the pre-menu board, the menu board, and the order screen. This is what I'm going for the special on the school. There's one additional, a canopy sign. There's five total. No, there's, Th there's a, spe a special permit for the 25 square foot limit. That's the, that's the east. And then if you went to, let me make sure I'm facing this right way. The, the sign for the west elevation is where the pre-menu board, the menu board, and the order screen goes. And where on these pages with elevations, where it says, for instance, south paren zoning so, comma side comma approved, what is that telling us that the, the signs we're seeing on that south elevation are approved and do not require any permit from us? Is that what approved means? Correct. Or with, yes. were they approved as part of a, by the planning board or? No, by the building have, commissioner. Okay, by the building commissioner. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to understand the, how this is marked up here. So, and then, okay, so the east, that's the, the rear and it exceeds the size limit. That's why you need a ZBA special permit. And then the ground signs because of the number of ground signs is right. the other issue before us. And so, they're just the ground signs that are on the King Street side. And that's because there's already one main ground sign at the entrance to the development. Um, and these little ones, I mean, you could, uh, um, they're not the same type of ground sign announcing a business, but they are addi additional signage on the front of the property that are projecting from the ground. So they have. And which which page is showing us? Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. Those are directional though, you're saying? Well, I mean, they're menu boards. So, okay. you know, we can't get into the content, right? Um, so we don't, 
we can't differentiate necessarily based on what's on the sign. So that's why, you know, you have plastered signs along the frontage. Those are going to count for ground signs. And so if it's helpful to you, it's, it's page 12, 13, and 14. 12 is the pre-menu board. So as you drive through a drive through, there's a board while you're sitting and it has some items on there. Then you pull up to your next, you pull up to the, the order screen, which is the canopy and the menu board. And it gives you all the items that you can look at while you're ordering from the, the order screen. It's all in this area here that I'm sort of circling with my cursor. And to clarify that page 14, and this is my um, unfamiliarity with this uh, kind of product, the DOS on Canopy, DCB on Unistrut, how does that relate to what we're supposed to be looking at? Is that, what is that unit? And is so that it's, it's, it's a Canopy that gets attached to the ground and there's a digital order screen that sits within it. Okay. And up above there's a, there's a, there's a structure that goes over the car. So while you're sitting there looking at the screen, it protects the screen and it also keeps you out of the weather while you're ordering. So while you're rolling down your window to order, the, you know, you're not getting rain or snow coming into your window. So that's literally where you're ordering. And uh, Carolyn, what are we supposed to be, how does that, is that a unit we're also supposed to review as one of the ground units? So, yeah, I mean, basically you're evaluating, the standard is they're asking for more than one ground sign. And so you need to evaluate the structure itself um, okay. um, for each of those pieces. And whether or not, you know, um, the standard, of course, is um, whether, you know, um, in the zoning um, is um, whether they're located where they're allowed and whether there's some unique aspect about the property that um, warrants, you know, additional signage and it's in the permitted, it, and it should be permitted in the public interest. So you're evaluating those things for those additional structures that are on the property. And that's one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to visualize how, for example, distracting these might be since they're on the west side to, to drivers on King Street. But Carolyn, that, that that's not an issue that's come up from the city's perspective or a concern that's come up from the city's perspective? Um, DPW did not have any concerns. Oh, I'm just trying to find the page here. Um, about that. And I think the way that they're oriented, they're not facing the street. They're sort of oriented to the drive um, aisle. Um, but maybe, the, I mean, the applicant can maybe describe that a bit more. Basically, when, you, when you're driving in, they're, they're all at a slight angle so the car can see it looking at it at an angle. As far as them being bright or distracting to the road, the majority of the time the cars would be in front of these menu boards driving through. And they're not on. At nighttime, they are internally illuminated, but the only thing that lights up is the lettering itself on the on the screen itself so on the pre-menu board let's say the actual area is about two by three the majority of it is opaque except for the, the lettering or whatever item that might be shown so all of these signs are illuminated yes yeah i you know i, I share your confusion david I, it would it, it, i would have loved to have seen a sketch of you know, just what the signs look like and where they are in relation to the building, not by the plans, but actual um, proposal. I think it would have made it a little easier to well, page, well, maybe I could ask this question. On page, I'm looking at page two of the plans. Yeah. I see letters yep. F, G, A, I, H, I, and uh, what, just tell me again, uh, please, which, yeah, which so ones G are these are signs? G, H, and I. So if you're asking for the location, if like you said, if you go to page two, right, when yeah. you're coming through the drive through G is where the pre-menu board goes. And then you have I is where the order screen is. And then right in front of I is H is where your pre-menu board is. And so you're, you're driving is... in from south to north, yes? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When you drive around the building, you'd be going 
You're going this I way. I believe north to south. North, 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 north to south. And then you're coming this way. Oh. And then exiting this way. And F is a clear. You're going up bar. here, over here. I see. Over I see. Here, okay. Over here. So the, the signs we're talking about are G, I, and H. Right, right. And so here. we're also talking about A on the east side, which is a right. complete, you know, it's separate. Thing. Yeah, I'm not I'm not as concerned with that one because it's for all the reasons we've said it faces the back. There's going to be another building there. Are no, no residential use at all to anywhere to the east. Um, but but yeah, I understand. Thank you. I understand that uh, A is also in the mix. Well, or a, on the back yeah. side. A, no, A looks to be right on King Street, at least from there's like, two A's. There's but two the one A's. on King Street's been approved, right? Or right. doesn't need our approval. Yeah. Right. So it's Correct. the A on the right or east side that is right. that 25 foot sign that we have to approve okay yeah um but is, sorry go ahead will, will there be any landscaping between that drive-through lane and the curb or the sidewalk yeah you know a green screen or anything shrubbery mm -hmm. there's landscaping and, required as part of the planning board approval and so do any of these plans tell us what that consists of so we'll, we have an idea of what will be blocking the view of these ground signs from King Street? Yeah, let me or pull that up, okay? Because um, I, I can I, get that. Oh, must be if, if I could make If I could make one comment, two of the, the pre-menu board and the menu board, the height of these are about five feet tall. Mm -hmm. So as far as, if you were driving down the road and you looked over, you'd barely see them because most of the time there'd be cars in front of them. And same thing right. with the order screen itself. The only thing part of the order screen you, you'll see is the part that stands above the car, which ends up being 10 feet overall height. Yeah, I guess my concern is, is and it's not a huge concern, it's just a question, is um, but what about when that there are no cars in front of it? And, and, and so that's why I was curious about the landscaping to the wet, just to the west on that strip. Um, okay, so let's see. Are you seeing me going through my screen now, or do I need uh, to? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. we are. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, oops, I think I went to the wrong one. Hold on a second. Sorry. I guess, I guess while you're looking, while you're looking, Carolyn, my, my, my question is, I don't know, just, and again, I'm, I'm not saying I'm against this. I'm just thinking out loud that, you know, the whole King Street corridor, trying to make it less, I don't know, in, in my Clutter. view, less cluttered, less um, distracting, um, uh, we're fully realizing it's a commercial strip. I get that, and we're not in a residential subdivision here. Um, but that's that's the that's the reason the only reason I'm asking these questions. And and I thank you, David. That articulates something that hadn't totally formed in my in my head yet. But I also worry about the precedents that this will set. Um, you know, for other businesses to have all these signs, all these illuminated signs. A question it raises for me, and again, this might be more planning than ours, is um, the relationship to pedestrian traffic, because this is, there is a sidewalk on that side of the street, um, and the uh, A that has been approved uh, clearly is over an entrance. There's a door there. I don't see any opportunity for pedestrians to walk from the sidewalk to the front entrance but i'm curious about the whole buildings and i don't know what relationship this has to what we're considering right now but the relationship of the um frontage street frontage of the rest of the building and if those occupants will also have pedestrian traffic coming in from the street uh, will there be entrances doorways in which case they will have kind of some sort of relationship to these signs. I think one thing you have to be careful of is we, they, they get referred to as signs by the building inspector because some, some do that way. But again, what they are are menu boards. They're not, those GH and I are not advertising for Starbucks. What they're doing is they're helping 
when you go through the drive through you need an order, you need a menu board, and an order screen, and a pre-menu board to be able to order what you're ordering. It's not saying Starbucks on there. It's for the drive through traffic. From what I'm seeing on this drawing here, I wasn't in front of the planning board, but we had, the planning board approved this building yeah. layout. They approved the drive through going around. Yes. And from the drive through over to the sidewalk, I'm seeing a bunch of like little stars where that's all a landscaped area that swings down, swings around in front of the Starbucks. So the A sign that faces the A sign that faces west, which is approved and allowed by right, people are gonna that walk in are gonna be walking in. There's like a walkway right there they're gonna walk into, and then it goes around and you go to take a left there right where the the letter E is, and that's where they would walk in to go into their traffic, to walk walk in to go into the store. Everything else is just a drive through going around. Um, so I, I don't know if you see the planting plan that I put I, on this Yeah, screen. I do. Okay. I do. That's helpful. It's to, to me, that's very helpful, but go ahead. Okay. I'll describe what the planning board approved because it, it also speaks to um, uh, Maureen's um, concern about pedestrian access. That was the critical part of the planning board review. The whole, I, that this came in as a drive through and with the circulation as shown. Um, so the planning board knew full well that this was going to be a drive through establishment. So knowing that you know, whatever components would support the drive-through, they would probably be on this side or the side of the building. So I'm just gonna show with my cursor. Can you see my cursor, um, the yeah. arrow? So this is the yeah. main entrance and you would come in um, this way as a driver and come around. There's landscaping around these dumpsters on this side. Um, and then you come around the front side and this is all, um, these are, there's a, there are two rows of trees flanking the sidewalk because that's a planning board requirement. So on the King Street side, these are all new shade trees that are being installed right behind the curb. Then you have um, a six foot wide sidewalk right here, new sidewalk that's gonna be built. Then on the back side of the sidewalk between the sidewalk and the drive aisle, there's another 10 foot strip of planted trees, um, infiltration, basin, shrubs, um, perennials in this whole area here to flank the sidewalk so that the pedestrian is protected from the drive aisle. Um, and those are those plantings are required not suggested right? They're required okay. and then the other piece so if you're coming from the north here there is a required crosswalk right here where my arrow is that's okay. going um, to allow pedestrians to cross the drive through aisle and come under a covered arcade on this side of the building so they can come to the front and enter because all the front doors are on this side. So that's one access from the north. The other access is right here. There's a sidewalk here that comes up and comes over here for access. And this access is also flanked by landscaping. Yeah. So that, all of that yeah. is a protection of the pedestrian path and as well as will a be screen. a screen for the lighting. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel much better. Just mm -hmm. And I'm sorry I didn't present yeah. I'm sorry I didn't present that in my staff report. I, I, I you know, that was a misstep on my behalf. Oh, that's sorry. okay. But, that's all right. That's okay. But this is helpful, I agree. Yeah. 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 So um okay. any other uh questions? Sure. Uh, go ahead. No, that is very helpful. So the perception, and in fact, the traffic flow, pedestrian traffic flow, uh, the what people see from the streets, I guess, whether they're driving or whether they're walking, is essentially the backside of the building. And all pedestrian traffic will be directed to the parking lot side, which is what you're calling the, what will serve as the front of the building. Right, so this is the view, gotcha. do you see this now? Um, I'm sorry, that's the um, south elevation. Um, um, this up here at the top is the view. So they're actually gonna be awnings there to make it look like a front, but there's gonna, actually not gonna be any actual entrances. Um, so, and here's the arcade here, um, the covered walkway around the end of the building. And all of those doors, they're just service doors. They're not yeah. public entrances. Right. No. right. Okay. okay. This is really helpful. Thanks. 
So looking at the standards where to approve this application, we're required to find that the signs are located only where they're otherwise permitted in the district, that the architecture of the building, location, land or nature of use is such that additional signs or a sign of a larger size would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in the public interest. I never really understood that phrase, but addition, and then additional ground signs shall only be approved if there are exceptional circumstances to warrant their approval. And if all efforts are undertaken to keep additional ground signs as small and low as possible. Um, but the, both the phrase permitted in the public interest and exceptional circumstances, I don't think I've ever fully <laughs> um, understood uh, in all of the signs we've approved in the past exactly how how those phrases are satisfied but but I don't want to open up that that discussion um, I think um, does anyone else have any other questions I have no problems with the project as with the, uh, I'm sorry with the Oh, uh, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, yeah. oh, Bob, you still there? I mean, you need you need a sign to you need the pre-menu board, you need the menu board, and then you need a place to order. That makes sense. And um, the adding three more feet to the uh, Starbucks sign is not really a problem in my in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have a problem with it. I just don't, I don't understand how uh, there are quote unquote exceptional circumstances or what public interest is served, but, but, but we're not, we're, that's not, that's not to be just, you know, that's not, it's not, I don't think it's necessary to have that discussion. Now. Right. I, I don't think right. I, I don't think I have a problem with, with what's being requested. And my biggest concern was King Street um, and distractions or too much light or um, but I feel a lot better about that with the seeing the landscaping plan. I, I pretty much agree, although I, I share your um, confusion about the language and I don't know if this is the appropriate time to go into it or not. I mean, I don't really see any exceptional circumstances here. I don't have a problem with it, but um, I don't I don't think we're being directed to deny this because they're not exceptional circumstances. So I guess I just am curious and maybe we can take this up at another meeting in a separate discussion separately. But um, again, my only concern is precedent and you know. I, I would say the, uh, I oh sorry. I, um, I, I was I, just gonna uh, excuse me, I was gonna say that uh, the uh, in terms of precedent. I think our position is normally that every application is so fact specific that um, I don't think I think we can always take the position that the that there there is not necessarily a precedent set in one case that absolutely would have to apply to another one. It's not like you know judicial decisions uh, or starry. De, what is it? Starry decisis. Starry decisis. Yeah. yeah, but you know, and I and I appreciate that, although. I do think that by approving something that has as many signs as it has in this kind of a business that we are setting a precedent because the next one that comes through with a drive through, it's going to require. They're going to point, the they're going to, and they're going to point to this one. They're going to say you ordering. did it for this one. Yeah. So I, I do think that, you know, for the most part, I think you're right. It's pretty much fact specific, but the next business maybe attached to Starbucks in the same location is going to, you know, want to have the same thing. And how many pre-order, you know, order menu, pre-order, pre-menu, you know, can there be? So, you know, again, I don't, I don't, I think you're probably right. Um, and barring any objection on the part of the city or DPW then, and seeing the, the um, planting plan, you know, I do feel a lot more comfortable about this, but that's yeah. Um, and and knowing that the planning board looked at the entire overall right. project, that's right. Yeah, I, I I think I'm I think I'm okay with it. I agree. It's an interesting conversation offline, maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My um my my uh, two cents in that topic is I do feel that 
the traffic <clears throat> navigation is uh, maybe not exceptional circumstances, but uh, they, to me, they warrant approval because these are tried and true that um, helping people know where they're supposed to go and moving traffic through makes sense. And they've tested this and they know they're doing it right. Uh, however, and this is why I did a uh, post question on the uh, A side facing the parking lot. I, I would have preferred that that did not exceed the size limit because I don't see any reason why it needs to. They will have already captured their audience. People will have driven in to go to Starbucks. And it um, feels to me like it doesn't need to exceed the size requirement to serve its purpose as directing people to you know, the Starbucks. So in this case, and it's not a big issue for me, but in terms of setting precedent, I would like to think that we always have a just reason to approve something that goes beyond um, this, the code. Mm -hmm. Good point. It is a good point. Can I, um, just a clarification, um, it is possible that they, the Starbucks alone, so what, the way we measure signs is by drawing a box around everything, including the logo. So if you were to just drop the box or shrink the box and not include drive-through with the directional arrow, that would comply. So the Starbucks itself complies. It's just adding that extra block that says drive-through. So, okay. you know, that in itself could be considered a directional component and could be eliminated and you'd have a compliance sign. You could also probably eliminate it and it would be okay because people who are going through the drive-through already see other signage telling them which way to go. So um, I think in that respect, you wouldn't necessarily need to feel like you're, you know, um, approving something exceptional way, you know, beyond the um, allowed uh, provisions in the ordinance for, for larger signage, because it really could easily um, comply by just truncating that drive through. That's helpful. That's helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, big, big picture here with this application I, I i think i'm comfortable with it and again carolyn there's no if there are no more questions from the board uh, there's no member there are no members of the public waiting to address speak right uh, let me just confirm sorry oh. i need to expand my window again just take me a minute i'm sorry. seeing two phone numbers so i assume that's bob and the, the applicant, applicant yeah. so i think it's just us thanks Appreciate so, that. I couldn't find my button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess we we could have a, a motion. A motion to, to close the public meeting. A second. Our, who's on this, Maureen or Bob? Bob, why don't Bob? I did last time, Bob. Okay, Bob. Okay, second, I make a motion. I make the motion we close the public meeting. Second. Oh. Okay. All, <laughs> all in favor? Do we we need a roll call? I think right. Yeah. Uh, so Carolyn will read the role. Um, Ava Bloomberg. Uh, yes. Maureen Scanlon. Or Bob. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Bob, Blue go with Bob. Over. Yes. 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 Bob Riddle. Yes. Okay. And then a motion on the uh, application for the special permit. Bob. Okay, I make a motion we approve the special permit by from uh, for Andrew Serrato, Serrato signs for additional ground signs for the Starbucks drive through at 303 King Street, Northampton, map ID 24B-70 with uh, no conditions as, as the applicant has uh, in his in his application. Can I make a friendly amendment, Bob? Sure. Um, I would like to just amend the, just the little control that we have around the illumination to say that it will be from during business hours. Good. Is that all right? That's okay. Perfect. And did you want to say something about the size of the sign? Do we need to do that too in the motion? No, no, the applicant supplied for that. Okay. 
Uh, Carolyn, do you, is that, do you agree that, uh, because I know we have our, our decision has to include signage, but we can just say as presented in the yes, application. Correct. Okay, so, yeah. okay, okay, thanks. All right, so I'll okay, second, uh, I'll second, second Bob's motion. And then, uh, so roll call, roll call for the vote, please, Carolyn. Uh, David Bloomberg. Yep, in it's favor. Over. Yes. Bob Riddle. In favor. Okay, great. That's, that's three in favor, so that passes. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, if there aren't any other procedural questions from the applicant, we can just go, we have, we have two uh, minutes uh, to approve, for, um, both for May 14th. Um, do we have a motion to approve those? So I'll moved. make a motion we approve the minutes. Oh. Okay. Second. Oh, go ahead. That's all right. I'm I'm on mute because my dog is barking and nobody can get <laughs> to him right now. Sorry. Okay. Um, I thought um, there was one one extra letter in one of these. I just let me just find it. I saw two two minutes. Are you all set yeah, with me? Yes, we're all time. set. We're all set, sir. Yep. Thank you. Thank could, you. Could Thank I, you, sir. Could I make? Would you, would you mind if I make one comment? And it's it's not my town. And it's not my business. But it's it's interesting. I've done a lot of Starbucks. And when I apply for permits, sometimes it's not very often that they can consider these directional signs, quote signs. And what's interesting on this is the planning board approved the drive-through, and you guys almost could have squashed the drive-through by not approving these signs. It's it's kind it's kind it was kind of interesting. I didn't think you were going to, but if you did, this guy Starbucks would have made this investment for a drive-through, then they wouldn't have any sign, ground signs. But they consider the ground sign. It's almost like that language needs to be adjusted a little bit, or mm -hmm. maybe the planning board gets involved with that part of it to say, well, what, what's going to be there for menu boards to help, and you know, maybe change the language a little bit that way. It's mm -hmm. again, it's not my business, but as this went on and the concern was there, I kind of chuckled. I said, if these people say no, they're going to have a drive-through and no one's going to be able to order anything. So, right. Um, I, I, anyways, I, yeah, I think um, it's it's because of the different jurisdiction, but it's an interesting point because. If the planning board had jurisdiction over this question, it would be folded into the whole pro project. Correct. Yeah. But they don't. Yeah. Right. So, anyways, okay. I appreciate your time in this strange okay. world and uh, be safe. Enjoy. Okay. Yeah. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I can't find the. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing two sets of minutes, both for the same day. One was the finding, right. the four o'clock finding, yep. and the other was um, the, the hearing that day. So I'll just make a motion to accept them both, if we can do that. Uh, yes. Um, Second. Uh, there was one word in there somewhere that was plural instead of singular, but it's not going to have any effect on anything. So, so okay, so uh, I guess just roll call. I think I heard a second, so roll call on the approval of the motion to approve. Well, I, see, I do see a typo if we care. <laughs> There's, it Where says is it? property on the second page of the May 14th. It says property liens instead of property lines. I, yeah, we might as well fix it. I, it's just, <laughs> you know, if we're okay. going there. Uh, so I, I guess just so with just that correction, I think we have a, a motion and a second. So, Carolyn, we just have to do the roll call for the vote. Uh, David Bloomberg? Yep. In favor. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. Bob Riddle? Yes. Great. Thank you. And then, is there anything else? Do we know about the schedule, upcoming schedule, Carolyn? You said it might be getting busier? Or? Um, yes. There is not a meeting for the 25th. Let me just double check. Uh, no meeting on the 25th. Um, so the next meeting would might be July 9th. Okay. But I don't know yet. Mark. Okay. And if there's nothing else, I guess we could just move to adjourn. Do we only have one meeting in July and August again? Oh, yeah, good question. Well, we never got to that because of this Thing. craziness and... Um, and I wasn't sure if anybody was going away anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we haven't had a, 
Uh, we can certainly have the discussion. What is your interest? Well, do you think, I mean, is there a reason to have, um, just, well, do you think there's gonna be enough business that we will need more than one meeting? Um, or would one meeting be very difficult to handle everything that might be coming up? You know, actually we have technically, um, we've passed the deadline for July 9th. I think that, um, actually now that I have, I have the screen up, let me just go look. Um, uh, sorry. All right, thank uh, you for checking. I don't think there, uh, okay, what's going on here? Okay. Um, so that was planning board. That's not coming. That's just. Um, oh. There is one possible zoning board permit. Um, it's not ready for, they are, they filed in May. They're showing a zoning violation. So we don't want to put them on the agenda until they have everything except for what they're asking from the zoning board. That's the only one that's come in. It could be that they're ready July 9th. Um, if they're not, then we don't have anything new besides that one. So I think there's only one reason to have a, one meeting in July. So if they're not, for, so for example, if they're not ready July 9th, I would put them to the end of July and you wouldn't have an early July meeting. Okay. And there is still in theory enough time to put through the public notices for July 9th? Yes, and in fact, if they don't make it for July 9th, I need an extension agreement from them so that they don't get a, um, a constructive grant permit um, so we have we have to hold the public hearing within a specific timeline and if mm -hmm. they don't meet the July 9th then I'm going to need that extension agreement from them so um, I um, it'll be sometime in July I think unless they really ask for a really long extension so I, okay. I guess the short and the long answer is we'll probably only have one meeting anyway in July do you know when you will know when, when it will be? So I did give him till next week, the 18th, okay. to um, give me updated plans. And I told him if he didn't give me um, them on the 18th, he couldn't go on July 9th. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really going away, but we have our little camper van. So it, it just we're trying to figure out a week that we can just carve out. So. Um, yeah. I would just be grateful to know as soon as you know. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks. I know you. You're really good at that. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Motion to adjourn. Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, we need. Oh, that was a motion. So I guess just a second <laughs> on that. <laughs> I should have said that more definitively. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay, I heard Bob say second. So, second, um, and then... David Bloomberg. Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. Bob Riddle? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Right. Good to Until see you all. Until next time. Take care. Take care. Bob.